Hello, my name is Kenyon. My call is KFYVLL. I'd like to show you the best way I know how uh, of installing a PL259. In the first picture here, we see a PL259 disassembled. The bushing at the top, the barrel in the middle, and the center of the PL259 at the bottom. In the next picture is some of the tools you need. A utility knife, a pair of wire cutters, and a red curved thing is a soldering tool. You can get these at uh, most places that sell soldering equipment and at, uh, and at Radio Shack. The next picture is a piece of RG8X coax. Take your utility knife and split the insulation on the outside of the coax about two and a half inches, making sure you don't push the utility knife too deep into the insulation. You just want to nick it so that when you're done, you can split it open with a pair of needle nose pliers or your soldering tool. The next picture you see the insulation starting to split open and in the following picture you see the insulation split open the full two and a half inches exposing the shield in the inside of the coax. In this picture you see the center conductor and the shield of the coax. The uh, excess insulation cut away, you want to you cut it away smooth so that there's uh, no splits or jagged edges or anything of that nature. Next you want to start pushing the shield of the coax back over the outside of the external insulation. You want to push it uh, down uh, as far as you can, extending it uh, the full length of the exposed shield. You want to take your soldering tool with the curved pointed end and stick it between the strands of the braided shield and start combing it out. <laughs> Unlike your girlfriend, uh, you can't use hair conditioner on this. Uh, too bad, huh? Okay, and uh, you continue doing that until you uh, separate all the strands and have them all smoothed back. And then look around the center conductor uh, to make sure there's no knots, as I call them, or places where the coax is still braided together. This could cause you a problem when you start uh, trying to push uh, uh, the bushing on. Next, slip the large end of the bushing, not the threaded end, but the solid end, over the coax and start pushing it down over the uh, combed out, straightened out blade. Uh, this can be quite difficult. You can use a pair of pliers to, to hold the coax. You just have to gauge back a little bit so you can push the bushing and, and then move the pliers and push the bushing. Uh, you can use dielectric grease or Vaseline to aid in this process. It's, it can be quite difficult, uh, but the tighter uh, the connection you have here, the harder it is to push the bushing on the better connection you'll have between the, uh, the bushing and the PL259. This picture is not real clear, but you see the little red ring around the center conductor? You push the coax, or as it were, you push the bushing onto the coax until the shield just, become, just begins to come out uh, the opposite end of the bushing. Once this is done, you can take your utility knife 
and trim away the uh, strands of the shield of the coax that's sticking out of the back side of the bushing. You, you kind of lay it on the coax and, and twist the knife a bit and uh, you don't want to nick the insulation. If you're very careful you can uh, be successful at this and uh, as you see in the next picture here our, all our, our excess wire is uh, trimmed away and uh, sorry but this picture is not in very good focus either but uh, you can tell uh, you lay the uh, the uh, inside of the PL259 along the coax in the bushing and gauge about how much of the insulation you uh, need to strip off so that it will uh, successfully come out uh, the end tip of the bushing but there be enough insulation left up inside the connector as to prevent any arcing or short circuit. Here I'm using a pair of mechanical wire strippers to strip the insulation off the center conductor and in the next photo you'll see the insulation partially pulled away and then again uh, I reverse the mechanical strippers they don't work real well this way but uh, you can uh, nick the insulation good enough where you can uh, finish stripping off the required insulation uh, with a pair of needle nose pliers and in most cases your fingers. Here you see all the insulation stripped away and in the next photo we start uh, sliding the barrel connector the neural end pointing toward the end of the PL259. Make sure you don't put it on there backwards. And if you have an excessively long piece of coax or it has a connector on the opposite end, don't forget to do this. Because uh, when you put it all together, you can't uh, connect the coax without the barrel connector. And in the next picture, you see the barrel connector behind uh, the pushing. Next, you slip the center conductor to the middle of the internal part of uh, the PL259, pushing it up until it gets to the thread section, and then you, uh, you screw it down tight uh, onto the threaded section. And then you can uh, take a pair of wire cutters and clip off the excess from the center pin on the PL259. Cut it as pretty close to the end of the pin as you can. And then the next frame you see uh, you see it uh, cut off and uh, and you're ready to uh, complete. In the last photo, you'll see the barrel connector uh, threaded over the PL259. You're not done yet. You still need to solder the center connector. I use a large 1500 watt soldering gun. And uh, before you solder it, please use, a, use an ohmmeter and measure the center pin to the uh, outside of the connector. To make sure it's not shorted and inadvertently a piece of wire got in there or as we call it a bird cage and caused you a short circuit. Uh, do this before you solder it uh, as if it is shorted you can always unscrew it and repair the short and then continue on. If you solder it together and then find a short you'll have to cut it off and start all over again. Thank you, Kale 5 ELL.